Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drink. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. You know, back in the day, I used to be jacked like Zac Efron. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Nathan Simmons, and uh, no one's ever going to know about you because you're going to die in my time machine. <laughs> and I'm Mally Moore, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast where we all give a big middle finger to single-use plastic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, absolutely. You know, I I just got back from a trip to Orlando. Oh, boy, oh. are your arms tired. <laughs> we stopped at Portillo's to, to eat before we came here. Wait, mm. there's a Portillo's? There in- is. The straws they give out uh-huh. are, <laughs> I can't describe how fat they are. Like, this is <laughs> such a waste. Take two straws, slip them down the middle, and then reattach them. And call me in the morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like putting a dick in your milkshake, right? Basically, basically, you're stirring around in there. Man, I haven't had Portillo's since I lived in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. I haven't had a dick in a milkshake since I moved to Florida. <laughs> I, that's my go-to Sunday treat. Like That's what I usually have. That chocolate cake shake, am I right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Man, so guys, this is the Silver Linings Playlist. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we're a podcast where we watch movies such as the movie we're covering today, Totally Killer. And uh, we try to find a silver lining for our characters at the end of it. Yeah. And right out the gate, Mally, oh. I have a question for you. <laughs> Why this movie? I don't know. Because <laughs> here's, here's my, my fine tooth comb uh, going through as I analyze this movie. I don't know if this qualifies for the show right, <laughs> right off the bat, but. Bullshit. Oh, that's why I'm asking. Why 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 are we talking about Totally Killer today? Because this is your your pick. I mean, do, do, I mean, we're going to talk about the ending right up front? Yeah, go for it. I mean, this is a, if, if you're tuning in for the very first time, we are a spoiler heavy show. So go ahead. This chick ends up in a whole ass new timeline where nothing is the same. I guess that's true she her fucking name is she doesn't have her own fucking name anymore that's true i guess i guess that's true that's fair you know what? i'll give you that one madam webb accomplished her mission better <laughs> the first time i watched this movie i was like oh that was fun yeah wait a fucking second right. oh, okay okay <laughs> you know what that's totally fair i give you that because that's totally killer yeah and, and <laughs> nice. the credits started rolling i was like Huh. All right. And then, like, that was about it. You know what? I had a similar experience in that I had a really fun time with this movie and I watched it two days ago and I got to tell you the next morning, most of it was gone from my brain. And I, I don't think that that's a problem. Mm-hmm. Like this is, this was just super fun. Yeah. Like, I had a great time with this. Yeah. And uh, you know, this is the first week of women's history month. So we've got women check. Sure. We've got uh, going back in time. There's your history. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Alternate histories. Mm-hmm. Check. <laughs> And I'm sure there's a month in there, some point that they say, and uh, yeah, there you go. They talk about lezzing out. They sure sure do. In the movie? They sure do. And I was going to say, there are some characters that seem to exhibit superhuman strength at some (laughs) points. And you know what? It's five years since Captain Marvel. So there you go. All tying nicely in together. (laughs) Jesus Christ. This is awful. And as one character excitedly announces i'm michael fucking myers okay. so we know he has supernatural strength <laughs> oh, okay so you know we talked off mic and i said there's one part of this movie that i was not about that i was like no <laughs> no and it was that line I was oh, like, you can't do yeah. that no you can't do the michael myers line when bobo will hines yells i'm michael fucking myers <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes, 100%. I was like, look, this movie does a really good job of calling out the tropes that it's playing on. Sure. And then doing the tropes, but in a different kind of way. And that one line stuck out because I was like, that's not that's not it. You can't do that. <laughs> and also just satirizing the tropes mm-hmm. and how far we've come, but also how reductive things still are. Yeah. The dialogue in this movie is very funny. I do think there's a couple of running gags that... Uh, get kind of run into the ground a little but, bit but it's for the most part i i man i had a great time with this yeah no i had a fun time too i i uh, like i said i said off mic as well that most of my notes are just quotes from the movie and i hope i remember the context for them but Same. uh are you guys happy i finally picked a movie that just isn't fucking god awful no this is a fun one, I, a really, one. I, I like triangle of sadness that was a fun one. <laughs> oh right i picked that one yeah. Fuck. and also i should point out this is episode 180 mm. in this movie taking place in the 80s I felt mm. like that was simpatico. That's a nice symmetry that happened there. Totally on purpose. Absolutely. Uh, 
hundred percent on purpose. I'm so glad you thought about that ahead of time. <laughs> you're welcome. So totally killer. <laughs> yeah. I guess brief rundown. If you're not familiar with it, this is a movie from last year, 2023. That is essentially like a slasher movie, but with some uh, scream elements in there. I would say mm-hmm. it's got some bodies, bodies, bodies vibes even going on a little bit, and a real casual acceptance of time travel. Oh Very God. casual, <laughs> which I kind of appreciated. <laughs> the number of times that the reveal of the time machine has popped into my head in the last few days as just being like, yeah, so have you told anybody you're building a fucking time machine? Yeah. <laughs> that's so funny. I mean, like, there's no point in trying to explain it, right? Like, sure. she went back in time. That's Who cares? Move along. We've, we've seen it a thousand times at this point. But yeah, so like I said, if you are new to the show, we watch movies like Totally Killer, like we're talking about this week, and we try to find the silver lining for these characters at the end. And yeah, spoiler heavy, uh, Jamie does go back and fix things, but ends up with a totally different name. So I guess we could also refer to her as Colette at the end of the day. But yeah. a lot of stuff happens in this 90 minutes. What an awful name. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah, what a bad name. But uh, okay, so I don't think there's really much preamble we need to do, fellas, unless you guys have something. We can get right into the info dump here. Let's go, gentlemen. All right. We're on fast forward like this movie is. So here we go. <laughs> So as I already mentioned, the year is last year, 2023. The Ooh. director is Nanachka Khan. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I believe so. The film stars uh, Kiernan Shipka, Olivia Holt, and Julie Bowen. And that's pretty much all that Roger Ebert's website list. Put some respect on Lachlan Monroe's name. I was going <laughs> to say Lachlan Monroe, but I'm just, I go by Roger Ebert. There you go. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Why are we taking the fucking word of a dead guy? <laughs> <laughs> right. Jesus Christ. He's just still logging in and uh, leaving reviews. Yeah, he is. He sure is. He's doing his deal. Do it. Uh, deal. Do- D- yeah, d- 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 <laughs> dil diligence. <laughs> dil diligence. God damn it! You know that old uh, that old Harris Whittles joke that like, what if Roger Ebert came back from the dead and his thumb just came up from the grave? <laughs> That's how I'm referring to like our research for these movies on the show from now on. Our dil diligence. That's his name. Dil diligence. <laughs> that sounds like a fucking character who gets mentioned like once in like a deep lore cut of Lord of the Rings. Dil diligence is our intern. <laughs> it sounds like a comedy baby where what somebody just missed speaks and they just have to roll with it for the right. rest of the episode. Yeah, my name is Dill Doolich. <laughs> <laughs> the budget was $34 million, which is quite exceptional, I feel like. Yeah. This movie is an Amazon movie, so there's no way to know how much money it could possibly make, sure. but it currently has... Six billion. <laughs> it's incredible that they managed to hide that in the Hollywood accounting they have. But uh, <laughs> Sir, as a Hollywood accountant, uh, <laughs> boy, let me tell you. <laughs> the uh, Rotten Tomatoes score currently is 87%. Wait, doesn't this movie take place in 1987? I was about to say, I think it's 87. If that's no, wait, no, I think it is. I think you're right. I think it, it is. is 87 because I actually had to do a little bit of research about something that comes up later on. Yeah. So there you go. That's kind of perfect. Huh. Look at all this stuff lining up. Totally intentional. Why don't we totally uh, killer. watch the, the <laughs> Why don't we watch the trailer, fellas? I'd like to report yeah. a crime that hasn't happened yeah. yet. Oh, All yeah. we yeah. know is. <laughs> is yeah. I'm living that movie right now, which is how I know there's going to be a murder tonight. <laughs> Hate time travel movies. They never make any sense. Happy Halloween. I got to say, I remember not liking this trailer and being very surprised by the final film. <laughs> yeah. Well, it seems like well trodden territory at this point. Sure. It's not 1987 anymore. Oh, there you go. Confirmed. I love you. Did this get a theatrical release? Uh, I don't think so. Mm, I don't think so. Mm. Just remember when Blumhouse was immediately like a seal of quality? Like, yeah. I, we'd get excited about that. <laughs> year is it 1987 oh my god i know the 80s are almost over and i haven't even tried coke yet <laughs> i don't know i have so many questions about that lady yeah i got a lot of notes about that lady too actually this is mom time for my birthday bitch creepy ass cabin in the middle of fucking nowhere what's the big deal there's a murderer on the loose and you drove us into the woods <gasps> oh my god what i forgot to bring vodka you have seven and a half hours until you're stuck here forever i don't remember that timeline being put on this movie I no i don't either before it happens 
the machines kill us all? No, they more just rip apart the fabric of our society via dance videos on TikTok. They use dance against us? Come on out, the water's warm. Just so you know, I don't do blowjobs. You pee out of that thing. <laughs> just think, maybe if she did do blowjobs, she'd still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not make that the lesson. Terrible. <laughs> it's so good. Maybe the best joke of the movie to me. Sucks. God damn it. It's just dirt. Look at all these twigs. Yeah, I could give you a gummy this big that has 100 times more weed than this. <laughs> It's weird that no one ever says, hey, the killer kind of looks like Max Headroom. <laughs> like, at no, at no point. Yeah, yeah. Fucking Johnny Bravo looking ass. He does look like Johnny Bravo. I appreciate that the mask has a ring on it, like an earring. Oh, I thought yeah. that was kind of a nice touch. Well, he's he looks like Max Headroom, but he's got that cunty little Kiefer Sutherland earring from mm-hmm. Lost Boys. <laughs> Damn. That's a good description. Kiefer just out here catching strings. Oh, I'd say cunty as a compliment. Uh, yeah, it's 2024. Don't you know cunt is a compliment? compliment yeah right <laughs> oh my god how far we've come <laughs> that's my uh, platform i'm running for office with <laughs> you can't even compliment people these days <laughs> okay <laughs> so is this movie better if they retitle it totally cunty you know Ooh, with a k yeah i don't hate that yeah i don't hate it either mortal cunty <laughs> <laughs> Just keep the K train rolling. Mortal comeback. <laughs> Where I'm from, a K train is something entirely different. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I do appreciate that this movie, like right away, I thought I knew what I was getting in for. And mm-hmm. at almost every turn, it managed to like say, we know because <laughs> this movie starts and I'm just like, this seems like a YouTube video for some subpar true crime channel. Yeah. And that's basically what it is. <laughs> yep. It made me laugh because it is exactly like a BuzzFeed Unsolved video. Yep. Like down to the narration yep. and the little the little diorama is the best thing. Mm-hmm. Is BuzzFeed doing true crime now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. No, like it started and I was like, oh man, is this what we're in for? And then it zooms out and you see the guy with the podcast like recording mic. I'm like, oh, okay. All right. Thank All right. This movie knows what we're doing. Okay. I'm, I feel comfortable now. Holding up his phone and making a tour group listen. Yeah. Dude, I about fell out of my fucking seat because like one of the first shots is a sign that says North Vernon, which is where I went to fucking high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I thought that would be, this would be a fake town, but all right. I mean, I don't think this movie takes place in North Vernon, Indiana. You think it's like North Vernon, California or something? It's not Indiana. No. All right. We couldn't afford that fucking fair. <laughs> I didn't see a farm anywhere. Yeah. No one was white trash enough. <laughs> I was getting some uh, some real Ben Tramer vibes from the fact that people still walk around with this mask on after people were murdered by someone wearing it. I thought that was pretty good touch. Buck wild. It's a bold call. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bold call. My fiance lived in Tallahassee for a little while and like no one was going to Halloween parties dressed like Ted Bundy. Right, yeah. right. I mean, probably at least one guy tried, right? Mm. It's got to be at least one guy out there. I mean, I get shot down every year <laughs> for my fucking Twin Towers costume, bitch. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> It's a couple's costume. No, I'm saying the three of us. Me and Nathan as the towers. DC, you throw on some wings. Let's go, babe. God. God damn it. I do like that I get to be the play, though. I can make the little noises and everything. <laughs> you can make the little noises. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> just coming in. Oh, my God. Oh, wait. No. Dude, even better idea. We can take your son trick-or-treating. He can be building seven. Good God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm gonna move us along. Uh-huh. This woman comes out that works it's at this... It's not a bad idea. <laughs> this woman that works at Zataburger comes out with these free samples of french fries or whatever, mm-hmm. and she goes, you know, I always thought you had to kill at least th- more than three people to be labeled a serial killer. I actually looked it up, and <laughs> Wikipedia does say a serial killer is a person who murders three or more persons, so yeah. I was like, okay. Angie was spitting fucking straight facts. She sure was. She was. That's why I I love that line where he goes, let's give it up to Angie, who wishes there were more people killed. Yeah. But also, like, <laughs> he makes a point towards the end where he's like, I've been trying to milk three murders for like 35 years. I and know. it kind of feels like that first David Gordon Green Halloween where okay. everyone's like, the most brutal serial killer of all time. <laughs> I am so glad I'm not the only one that noticed this because as this movie started playing out, I was mm-hmm. like, this is the same setup as Halloween 2018. Sure. Yeah. Why can't I go to a concert because your friends were murdered years ago? That sure sounds like something that Allison says <laughs> oh, at, that, at sure. one point to Lori. Yeah. And then there's like, you don't speak to grandma at all. Oh, it sure sounds like Karen in that movie. Yeah. Oh, you made me take self-defense class and since I was seven. That sure feels like Karen shooting the gun out in the woods. Oh, yeah. Dude, I was low-key 
waiting for the fucking JLC cameo right? as the grandma. <laughs> that would have been too much. I would have fucking... Oh. <laughs> too much. And then also, there's a podcaster involved that's bothering the victims the whole time. So, mm-hmm. like, this this just feels like they just took that 2018 as a template and, like, let's play with it. You know what I mean? Oh, totally. And I, I do think, you know, Kiernan Shipka does a really great job of making me severely dislike her for the first 10 minutes yep. and then winning me over in the rest of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, this is such a white family. Like, the <laughs> sassy teenage girl uh-huh. who the parents just don't do anything about. I'm like, come on, man. Like, she this- literally has Betty Cooper. Cooper's dad from Riverdale, so... (laughs) Dude, my first note went, because I didn't know he was in this movie. I was like, holy shit, it's the doofy-ass detective from Freddy versus Jason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was my right. first note. <laughs> Silver Linings All-Star. Mm-hmm. Like, what a fucking family. So we got the fucking dumb cop from Freddy versus Jason, mm-hmm. the mom from Modern Family, and mm-hmm. the daughter from Mad Men. Mm-hmm. What is happening? Mm-hmm. Also, uh, <laughs> young Sabrina, right? Isn't this the girl from Sabrina? Yeah. I didn't watch the show, but I, I assume one of you guys did. <laughs> I gave up on it because it did that thing where, like, every scene looks Netflix like... Netflix existed? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> no, it, it did that thing that this movie does where there were some scenes that were shot with, like, a weird fisheye, right? Yeah. Like, and Sabrina looked like that the whole time. That oh. show looked like it was filmed in the like in the dark. There were just they couldn't afford lights. I don't. The art of lighting is lost on streamers. I think when it's gone, it's just it doesn't exist anymore. And you know, speaking of the quality, there's there's one scene in this movie that feels like it was filmed on like a I don't know like an old school flip phone. Mm-hmm. I was like, what? Why did the sudden drop in quality here? But we'll we'll talk about when we get there, right? And then yeah, like this whole setup here is that Jamie and her family her mom was friends with three girls that were killed back in the 80s mm-hmm. and these three girls were killed on the night of their birthdays which were each two days apart which i thought was kind of funny <laughs> and they were each turning 16 and were stabbed 16 times mm-hmm. and supposedly the killer left a note dude this note is unintentionally hilarious to me because <laughs> she's talking to this podcaster guy who like introduces us into the movie gives all this exposition at the beginning mm-hmm. and he's trying to figure out who the killer is 30 years later and he's like oh don't you know your mom had a note from one of the killers Mm -hmm. Uh, well from the killer and it says (laughs) on the note you're You're next next. someday (laughs) what the fuck yeah i couldn't help but laugh Uh, the someday really got me like oh just just you wait yeah (laughs) it's coming let me undercut the urgency here So she goes out partying on Halloween night and her mom is butchered Mm -hmm. in her home. I got to say the mom here, this is a better, this almost feels like an answer to Halloween ends, right? Like this is a better showdown than Lori has with Michael Myers in Halloween ends. I was going to say it's a nice little like, oh, like a little shot in the arm that this woman kicks ass. Like she's got like knives taped under sofas and stuff. And she's like, but also this lady, not very observant because she's already on edge because this is the 30th anniversary of her friend dying and her surviving mm-hmm. but also she goes to answer the door for a trick-or-treater for a clearly a grown-ass man standing in the door <laughs> right. by himself dressed like the killer i was gonna say wearing the mask like just just don't even open door for people with that mask on <laughs> hear me out mm-hmm. in the killer's defense oh in mm-hmm. the killer's defense okay <laughs> he was just defending against this fucking slander against smarties <laughs> as a candy sure <laughs> and i will not fucking stand for it. Nathan, how you sit on Smarties? Yay or nay? They're all right. Yeah, that's... Yeah. They're never what I go for immediately, but they're all right. It's like four months later and you still got like trickles of Halloween candy and it's just Smarties. I'm like, fucking no. It's just chalk. I'll just th- <laughs> I'll toss in the trash. <laughs> Finally, I'll just start shipping my Smarties to you. I mean, I, I prefer them over those like the conversation hearts. <laughs> you know what, DC? You no longer get to be the plane. Oh <laughs> man. You're going to talk shit on Smarties like that, you fucking prick. <laughs> we were also just talking about how we have to retire like naming characters in movies after directors uh-huh. and I I did have like the biggest eye roll in the world when I realized this was the Hughes family. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But no, I do love because you think this movie is just going to be all bubblegum and campy and everything, but these death scenes in this movie are fucking brutal, man. Uh, like yeah. he took some notes from Ghostface yeah. for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah, like the the exhausted gas that the mom has here while uh. she's being stabbed like it is it's kind of hard to listen to honestly like it's it's pretty brutal for what's in other words is a pretty dark comedy you know what i mean like this is where the straight up horror comes out and it was i was i was relieved because in the scenes where we're not doing horror it is funny it is like 
subversive. Yeah. And then in the actual scenes where the killer is there, it's it's not fucking around. No. no. They go for it. But it still manages to ride that tone well, I thought. Absolutely. Yeah. And then I have a question. Why is Jamie even back in school? Because it seems to be like the next day after her mom is murdered. Why is she allowed to go up to her bedroom immediately after the murder? That is a crime scene. That's true. (laughs) Well, there's a couple things with crime scenes that happen later on in the movie, too. That's totally good. But like she's at her desk in school, clearly disassociating, crying. And the principal is like, "Uh, you were so sorry for what happened. I'm like, she should be at home. Why is she here? So we can get the coach giving his like survival lesson, which is avoid the knife keep your life go devils yeah that would that's what i was gonna <laughs> open up that show with that was gonna be my intro oh but, it's uh, so good yeah he's like if you see the killer run like <laughs> that's the plan so funny i mean he's making good points yeah th- this is not anything to argue against i just thought it was funny that that was the first thing he said <laughs> and then man again where i thought i knew where the movie was gonna like have its pitfalls it always managed to cover its tracks mm. because like we go to this fair and we get introduced to her friend amelia uh-huh. who we saw on the night before but it's kind of inconsequential to the rest of the opening scene here but mm-hmm. like everyone's got this science project right and then she's got this booth this photo booth and i'm like oh this is gonna be some happy death day to you fucking plot device that uh-huh. happens and she goes oh yeah this is this is my time machine it's like oh it literally is a time machine okay yeah. all right all right I, you know jamie what? asks her so when are you going to tell people you're building a time machine yeah <laughs> just so <laughs> casual about it and yeah i mean as soon as this time machine got introduced it's like okay i see where the next 80 70 minutes of this movie is going totally. i can see it already and i i wasn't upset about that like no. it, the movie has fun getting there but like i was like all right i know what we're doing she's got to get back to the future she does i how do we feel about not only time travel movies uh-huh. but like funny scream-esque horror movies nowadays because I, I mean this one was still fine i fucking love happy death day i, I like too. happy death day as well and I, I liked happy death day to you as well but yeah. i'm like at some point this trope is gonna run dry right like this river is gonna run dry we've had a ton of these like fairly recently too and yeah. i i feel like Time travel is already such a big ask that you have one of two options. You either say, fuck it, we're not going to ever explain the rules and just have fun. Yeah. Or you explain the rules and run into the possibility of the audience getting frustrated if they're not following it. You know what I mean? Well, I liked I like this explanation about the river and you can hop out at any point and get back in and things keep moving. Like I liked that. No, I I, I'm also a fan of end game time travel theory, but I, I I also sort of just think there's like it, it's still there's still holes yeah. but it, it mostly works yeah i mean it's you know it's no play to spaghetti explanation God but. Fucking damn it this is twice this season yeah thanks mally <laughs> <Twice. laughs> <We're doing> <laughs> god at some point uh she says you know do me a favor stop listening to the podcast guy chris dubassage mm-hmm. smash cut to him introducing himself to her with the note i thought that was pretty funny <laughs> dubassage is also just inherently a funny name i mean the dad has the douche massage or whatever the fuck he calls it douche <laughs> massage <laughs> that's our uh, upcoming album title by the way uh, <laughs> douche i'll be sure to do my dill dil- diligence and listen to it <laughs> Uh, smash that like button <laughs> <laughs> so this is where we get introduced to the note right so at some point you know the principal's like uh, oh was your mom or no it was the sheriff yeah was your mom having an affair with this dubassage guy who's like this local podcaster guy true crime guy right and she's like no why would you say that she was always oh, well, she was having conversations with him she was texting him a lot right before she died and that's where he introduces himself to Jamie here, our lead character, and says, mm-hmm. look, the reason I was talking to your mom is because she knew something. She had this note. And she goes, what note? My mom never told me anything about a note. And that's this note that says, you're next someday. someday. <laughs> he also says the line that I thought you guys were going to use for the opening, which mm. is, my podcast has won five Podsy Awards. <laughs> I wrote that down. I wrote it down. <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. I wrote down so many intro options for this. I just went with the best one I thought available. We haven't won a single fucking Podsy. <laughs> we haven't. Where, where's our Podsy? 180 episodes? Nobody can give us one? <laughs> Toss one our way. When's going to be my time? <laughs> So, yeah, she's there's a line here. Most of my notes that from this point on are just lies that I thought were great. But it says she's probably at school where you should be. This is where we get introduced to that lady when they she travels back in time. So the killer attacks her at this fairground. Mm-hmm. 
And she gets in the photo booth, Amelia's photo booth, her friend. Mm. The killer comes in, tries to attack her, just stabs the panel. And for whatever reason, that sends her back to 1987. Fuck yeah. I wrote, so the time machine was almost ready. And in fact, it is ready. It just needed to be stabbed. It just needs to be stabbed. Yeah. But no, so this is where you can already see the wheels in motion. Okay, Mm. now she's back in time. She's going to meet her mom. She's going to try and prevent these other girls from being murdered. And then she's got to get back to the future, right? That's the whole idea. And and again, nothing wrong with that because I had fun the rest of the time. But yeah. she bumps into this lady <laughs> and this extra. I got a couple of notes. <laughs> Who seems like she would be a character, but right. isn't. Like, there's so much. She should come back. She should have came back at some point in the movie. High on cocaine and <laughs> helped save the day. <laughs> I would have loved it if, like, she had to pretend to be her mom for one scene. Oh, my God. That'd be great. You know what I mean? Sure. But, like, she bumps into this woman. She goes, what year is it? She goes, oh, it's 1987. And she goes, well, do you know Pam Miller? My which is her mom mm-hmm. and she goes well she's probably at school where you should be come on I'll give you a ride and I'm so glad uh-huh. Jamie called this out as being an insane thing to suggest to a stranger not only that but she says you should be in school she's brought her kids to the fair yeah I, like yeah <laughs> and then yeah yeah I'm, you you don't you're just gonna invite me into your car you're gonna leave the windows up and smoke I mean <laughs> that is the 80s I guess but like I'm just glad she called her out on that hot boxing the fuck out of those kids yeah so good <laughs> And then, yeah, she goes into school. She pretends to be a foreign exchange student from Canada to get into <laughs> class. Classic move. Doesn't need to verify anything. Yeah, no no verification, no ID, nothing. She just strolls in. That was the 80s, man. I mean, that is the 80s for sure. She goes to gym class. To Mally's couples costume from earlier. She jokes that it would uh, it must have been super easy to get on a plane. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. sure did. She sure did. And then she's in her gym attire and she goes, how is the school issued? We look like we work at Hooters. I was like, <laughs> she sure does. Like, you forget how short. I mean, I like my I like me some short shorts. Let's not sugarcoat it. Yes, you do. These are some short shorts. These are DC shorts. I know. I've seen so much of DC's legs. Mm-hmm, a lot of thighs in my house, for sure. <laughs> Just so much hair. <laughs> so to me, uh-huh. and I don't know how you guys feel about this, but this is where she gets introduced to her mom. Yeah. And to me, the more interesting part of this movie is trying to stop these three unknown girls that she has no affiliation with from being murdered more Mm. so than the I gotta get back in time and fix my mom you know prevent her from being murdered I don't know if you guys agree but I'm sort of in the middle because I I love yeah I love trying to stop the murders from happening but I'm a sucker for the oh I get to become friends with my parents trope like that that's kind of fun that's true and her kind of winning over Pam is really I like their I like their relationship a lot all I know is that I I fucking love dodgeball. <laughs> this dodgeball scene plays like a scene from Dodgeball the movie. Like, it is rough. <laughs> God, that was my fucking shit when I was a kid. There's one girl walking around in a daze like she's in Saving Private Ryan. Like, she's just been, like, sh- like bombed out. God. So good. She's fucking shell-shocked. And the coach has the line where she says, she says, you gotta catch the ball so I don't have to touch your weird kid blood. <laughs> It would have been good if they would have played that, like, that one part in that opening scene from Saving Private Ryan where that guy is looking for his arm. Yes. If they played it, like, shot for shot of that girl walking around and there's just girls passed out everywhere. Just a high whine over the soundtrack. Speaking of which, did you guys see Bottoms? I know I've brought it up a couple times now, but did you guys see it? Not yet. yet. Me too. Man, there is a scene in Bottoms that takes place at a football game that is highly reminiscent of that scene from Saving Private Ryan. Uh I highly recommend you see it if you haven't seen it. Especially if if you enjoyed this movie, you may get a kick out of that movie too okay so yes this is where she walks up to her mom and then the other three girls uh-huh. who were the three girls that were killed in the present timeline mm-hmm. and she says you know oh we're having my birthday party tonight and jamie early character says well maybe you should cancel your birthday party <laughs> and her mom as little pam goes maybe you should fuck off and die it's like <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's an appropriate response to a stranger suggesting you cancel your own birthday party. Sure. Like, she just walks up to these girls and says, ah, you should cancel your birthday party. It's also another trope I love in these time travel movies, mm-hmm. especially like Back to the Future, where, I mean, which is what really what this is riffing on, but going back and finding out that your parents weren't as squeaky clean as they act like they were. Right. Yeah, because this is where we kind of play on the Mean Girls trope, too, right? Because yeah, like she's a bully. In the future, the night her mom died, she was dressed as Molly Ringwald in The Breakfast Club. Ah, great. 
Yeah. There's a lot of things in this movie that they set up that they pay off pretty well. Yeah. Because here's where we find out that she has been obsessed with Molly Ringwald for 30 years because her and her friend group all dress as different versions of Molly Ringwald from their movies, and they call themselves the Mollies. <laughs> and these outfits are straight up out of John Hughes movies. They're yeah. so they're so well done. Yeah. The costume design's great. I'm obsessed with Heather's little hats. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I loved it. But yeah, I like that payoff. I thought that was really good. Because you think it's just a throwaway line because it almost seems like she's not dressed like anything at all yeah. in present day. So she's like, okay, I need some help. Clearly, I traveled back in time through that photo booth. I'll find my friend from the future. I'll find her mom, who would be my age right now. Who started building the time machine. Exactly. Yeah. So she goes back to that front desk lady. And she goes, I'm looking for, uh, I can't remember. What, what was the girl's name? Was it Lauren? Lauren. She goes, I'm looking for Lauren. And I was like, I know you, I, you know, I can't be asking because it it's private matters, whatever. And the <laughs> front lady goes, oh, she's in room G3 or whatever. <laughs> it's just... Head over there. And then I do love that she just opens the door. She goes, uh, is Lauren in here? And she raises her hand. She goes, oh, my God, you look great. And Lauren goes, what's going on? <laughs> It was a great little joke. I love it. I also liked, I think they did a great job casting the older and younger characters, like yeah. casting actors that looked alike. Yeah. And I also loved that they did cast different actors as Lauren and Amelia. Yes. Like instead of doing the, you know, we're playing our parents thing. Exactly. Like they do in, in Back to the Future, basically. And in Riverdale. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> throw out again that I watched all of that show. <laughs> I do like that uh, Lauren kind of just straight up accepts that she's from the future because she's got proof, right? She's got uh-huh. her smartphone that she had in her pocket and she's able to like tell things like i know about your notebook with all your time travel ideas and stuff like that but also i love the joke that like i mean i'm building a time machine it would be silly of me to not expect people to come back and ask me questions once i'm done with it yeah (laughs) it's pretty good yeah but she goes yeah okay so like i'm gonna try and fix the time machine here in 1987 we forgot to mention that in the present day that amelia lauren's daughter who was friends with jamie in the in the present day is also trying to fix the time machine because she's figured out that jamie has gone back to the 80s mm-hmm. and so they're both kind of simultaneously working on their own time machines and their own distinct timelines so. yeah and i love the reveal that we're still following stuff in modern day yeah. seeing how they're affecting the past is like a really fun hook yeah absolutely because you're getting to see both parallel at the same time right mm-hmm. and then this is where they go to a party <laughs> because that's where the first girl was murdered in the present timeline back in the 80s she was murdered at a party and i do like the reveal that her dad was ripped like Zac Efron. In the past. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a great reveal. He comes out of the pool like Jason Momoa. Like, yeah. it's insane. <laughs> And um, she sneaks into the party and then she gets caked out and then she sneaks right back in, walks up to the Mollies and says, oh, you know what? Make this party better. Let's call the police. <laughs> one of the girls, I think it's Heather, goes, I love Sting. And then Pam goes, yeah, they can play Don't Stand So Close to Me as she just glares at Jane. It's good. <laughs> Jesus. It's a good little board play. Good stuff. It's good stuff. And then this is where I realized, because I, I knew I recognized it from somewhere, but the first girl that gets murdered here, Tiffany, mm-hmm. I didn't realize this was Quinn from Scream 6. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? It is, yeah. Huh. I can't remember the actress's name, but I'll look it up real quick. But yeah, she's Quinn from Scream 6, who was my standout favorite from that movie. Liana Liberato. Yes. She's great. She's got a great running gag here, too, about <laughs> that we heard in the trailer. Because uh, in the future, I guess we're kind of skipping some some glaring things that need to be brought up. But yeah. in the future, Jamie is obsessed with this uh, rocker guy. <laughs> and he has a poster on his wall called Killer Instinct. That's his band name. And she runs into him in the past, who is hooking up with this first victim here, Tiffany. <laughs> she says, oh, I don't do blowjobs. Pee comes out of there. <laughs> and then... She's going to hook up with this guy on this waterbed. She excuses herself to the bathroom to pee first. She pushes up her boobs and says, he's going to write a song about these. He literally does the, so no head, and then fucking leaves. (laughs) So she comes out. He's not in there. She thinks he's in the closet because the closet door kind of creaks open. And she plays that whole game of, oh, I'm being uh, pranked, huh? Oh, I'm in this waterbed. You should come out. (laughs) And I got to say, the killer revealing himself walking out of the closet with a zero score or anything is kind of fucking chilling. It's great. It was real creepy. (laughs) Yeah. No, it's a full Michael Myers move. It's really good. And I I think this kill, it's crazy brutal, but it's also still funny because we're getting the waterbed spray during it. See, I thought the waterbed made it way more visceral. Oh. Like really? the, blood, the blood pouring out of her being stabbed over and over and then the water exploding around her. It just, it felt 
Blah, I don't know. Yeah. It felt very Nightmare on Elm Street to me. Yes. Yeah. Maybe that's what it is. I thought it was rock and roll as hell. <laughs> also, did either of y'all ever have a waterbed? No, thank you. Didn't want one. My parents did growing up, and I always thought it was very weird and uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. I had one for a few years. Yeah. I had a friend who had one, and I was like, I don't like the way it feels against my skin. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, horrible. <laughs> yeah. Horrible. I just felt like it would make me break out, like all over, like rubbing against that rubber all fucking night. No, things mm. i also did like that outside the room where she's being stabbed there is the song lady in red being played i thought that was <laughs> chef's kiss <laughs> yeah that was a nice touch all the needle drops here are good we got some new order at the party mm-hmm. i wanted to go to parties in the 80s mm-hmm. oh so when that echo and the bunny men song drops yeah. oh yeah damn yeah this movie is like tailor made for us Nathan. <laughs> also i love that we get the little reveal of that changing the timeline mm-hmm. uh-huh. and when it cuts back to the future animal instinct or whatever is now like he's like <laughs> a, a water sad acoustic away. emo or just a water bed away yeah killer instinct and now he's one water bed away because that's how close he was to death yeah <laughs> so good it's so good here's the thing before this happened she tries to go up to two police officers and say listen it's randall park and some other guy i didn't recognize she's like look there is going to be a murder tonight have you seen back to the future neither and both I'm like, nope, but I want to. And she's like, listen, there's going to be a murder. I promise you. And if there's not a murder, I know there's a party happening tonight with a bunch of teenagers and alcohol. So that should be at least enough for you. Right. Mm -hmm. And the murder happens. They call the police and I'm like, straight up. There's no reason why Jamie shouldn't be arrested. Uh, Yeah, for sure. 100%. And this is what that crime scene joke I was talking about, where Randall Park and his buddy comes up and he's like, all right, this is an active crime scene. No one move. And then everyone just fucking flees. (laughs) Yeah, it's great. (laughs) Randall Park's introduction of of listing the order that he hates people in as mm-hmm. old people, sick people, and people with dogs uh-huh. is one of, the, one of the funniest lines I've heard this year so far. <laughs> Granted, we're in February. <laughs> yes. And so Jamie's kind of like gotten in good now with Pam, her mom. And so they flee from this party. They go back to Pam's basement. And I got to say, I kind of want to be friends with Pam just because of her fucking bootleg VHS collection. Because <laughs> she's got a great collection here. And she's playing RoboCop, man. Yeah. Hell Oh, yeah. And it's my favorite scene of the movie. <laughs> I was going to say, I was almost devastated because it's the scene where Ed 209 is about to blow that guy away. And then they cut away from it. I'm like, no, that's the best part. And then they sure enough, they show the whole fucking thing. Yep. <laughs> Ashley was like, Jesus, is that how violent RoboCop is? I was uh-huh. like, we got to watch it. It's so good. You got to watch it. God, if I fucking love RoboCop. <laughs> it's so good. Although this movie takes place before that movie would have been available on VHS. Oh, sure. Well, that's why I like the bootleg nature of it, right? At least there's some kind of credence to it you know what i mean like they're trying to make it work i guess this is where her mom comes down pam's mom which would be jamie's grandmother (laughs) and in the future there was a moment where jamie was smarting off to her mom and she said you know i never would talk to my mom like that and this is where we were revealed that was a lie maury povich comes out with the the test results and also (laughs) grandma doesn't visit anymore because of how she behaved (laughs) yeah jamie's like you shouldn't talk to your mom like that and she goes why do you talk to your mom all sweet and nice she goes no and it's just well uh nobody wants to hear about how much you love your mom okay oh my god (laughs) she goes so good she goes sorry (laughs) (laughs) oh man and so there's this instance where you know jamie is like okay let's figure out who the killer is pam who have you in the mollies like really done any damage to who have you guys hurt and she's like no one Except for this long list of people she gives off. <laughs> and I did love that. I thought Fat Trish was just going to be a throwaway joke, uh-huh. but it is like a crux of the movie, which I really <laughs> yeah. appreciated. But she's like, you know, naming off a bunch of different people. And she goes, Fat Trish. And she goes, what happened to Fat Trish? And she goes, she got drunk and wrapped her car around a tree. Ugh. And then one of the guys says, yeah, that's why chicks shouldn't drive. And then it cuts to one of the girls nodding her head. Uh, yeah. Nice. <laughs> I was like, what <laughs> <laughs> I drive better when I'm drunk. I guarantee, guarantee you, you do not. Do not. <laughs> he keeps grabbing his junk mm-hmm. and like making the same like I got your right here jokes that are so. It's just so funny. Oh yeah, yeah. he goes. You, we got to get back to the environment. He goes. You give this back to the environment. <laughs> <laughs> It never gets old. It doesn't. And so they're like, okay, well, we got to get away from this killer. Let's go out. I know that the next kill happens in a cabin in the woods. And one of the girls, the next victim, she goes, oh, I know. Why don't we just go to my dad's condo? Like, that's safe. And she's like, yeah, great. Let's go do that. <laughs> so the girls pile in the car and they drive out there. And on the way there, I do like that they're talking about the girl that just died, Tiffany. And she goes, man, this makes me really miss Tiffany. She hated, hated blowjobs, blowjobs so much. much. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a good recurring bit. 
But they get there and like they realize, oh, this isn't a condo. This is just a fucking cabin in the woods. This right. is exactly where this kill is gonna fucking happen. Oh, I must have gotten it confused with timeshare. Yeah, <laughs> there's a weird thing here where like if Pam believes Jamie, because Jamie's convinced Pam that she's a psychic. Mm-hmm. If Pam believes there is a killer on the foot, why doesn't she at any point back her up for? There's like a weird thing that happens where she's just partying for like 20 minutes mm-hmm. and then suddenly remembers, oh, right, there's a killer. All right, we're in a horror movie. I just remembered. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so they get out there and the guys show up too. Uh, you know, technically her dad and Randy and a bunch of other people uh-huh. and they start partying. And I don't know. I think this may be the last movie that can get away with the, I just ate a bunch of brownies and what? There's weed in them? I right. think we got to retire that bit. I think we got to. Yeah. However. The caveat that the weed is bad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that is like, great. Because I even thought that i was like there's no fucking way that jamie of all people would be getting ripped off this fucking brownie and then right. i love how she's like oh this is just a bunch of sticks and seeds and stems like this is fucking nothing she's <laughs> it's like this is fucking dirt yeah this is garbage <laughs> <laughs> and i do like that that's why she has the tolerance and she's able to think clearly the rest of the scene while everyone else cannot so good you know what i mean yeah and then for some reason because pam is like now that tiffany is out of the equation i can get up with you know jamie's future dad Mm -hmm. is it blake is that his name yeah yeah so i can get with blake now and jamie's like no 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 because if you guys hook up and have a baby it's clearly way too soon before me to be born and you know be the proper age when i get back in time right so she keeps going like no 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 you guys are too horny just gotta (laughs) wait till you get to college at least and so, you know, they're both smacked out of their mind on this weed and they're making food in the kitchen. <laughs> and for whatever reason, Pam just jams this kitchen knife into her fucking palm and doesn't react until she starts bleeding uh, everywhere. Uh, it sucks. Yeah. I hate I, it. <laughs> yeah, it made me cringe. And she's like, oh, let's let's go get you bandaged up. So that gets them out of the equation. Her elevating her hand while they're making out yes. is so funny. It's so good. And so she's got it like completely wrapped in bandages and stuff. And then everyone's just kind of coupling off everywhere. And then I do love that Marissa pours a full glass of vodka, like oh just straight God. vodka, takes a sip of it, and then she winces at the taste. And it's like, I know, I'll pour more into the cup. It's so gross. <laughs> she puts a little splash of OJ in it and yeah. goes, everyone, I'm making cocktails. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Underrated joke is Finkel telling the the girl he's about to hook up with, I suck at foreplay, so you'll have to use the jets in the hot tub for that. And she's just like, okay. (laughs) I love the way that starts. She goes, oh, uh, where's uh, Pam? I'm like, oh, they're hooking up in the bedroom. She goes, do you want to have sex in the hot tub? He goes, yeah, but I suck at foreplay. (laughs) (laughs) You got to use the jets for that, yeah. Too horny, too soon. Too horny, too soon. I also love that when they're making out, Pam, like, snaps to reality of like oh shit i forgot there's a killer on the loose like you talked about right she goes the blood from my hand must have gone back to my brain <laughs> <laughs> it's a good joke every line man every line really hits in this movie in a way i did not expect honestly mm-hmm. i i thought it was going to be in for some overly written kind of stuff but i feel like this stuff really works you know what i mean mm-hmm. and um it turns out that the killer has kind of switched things up because now he kills one of the other girls. i think he kills heather here right or is he supposed to kill heather and get marissa instead i kind of get them confused yeah he's he's doing it out of order for sure yeah. he throws heather over the banister which right. is wild yeah no, no this fight scene this is like jason Voorhees coming out and fighting and like especially and specifically in number seven mm-hmm. <laughs> like when he's in that cabin fighting everybody like oh yeah this should get it's buck wild real quick <laughs> she collects the blood to give to randall park yeah and he one doesn't know what dna is yeah and the little business of him just tossing the bag on the floor yep. made me laugh so fucking hard <laughs> it's so good i had to look it up because it's like yeah i know dna wasn't used in forensics for a while but it turns out it did start getting used in 1986 yeah. so like maybe it hadn't made its way around to his department yet they definitely didn't have like a national database like that, right though. they did not have a database absolutely but also not knowing what dna is in general we had dna since the 1800s so i don't sure. know i don't know what the fuck he's talking about he calls it dma <laughs> and i do like things like what's dna and she goes i don't know you know the stuff <laughs> <laughs> she can't describe it either and so we've kind of glossed over this a bit but in the present day when jamie did go back to school there was the principal and the coach and the sheriff who kind of were a collective mm-hmm. and back here in the timeline in the 1980s we got introduced to Teen Doug briefly, and we got introduced to the young coach, and we got introduced to the young sheriff. But Teen Doug, who is the principal, has kind of been, uh, you know, helping Jamie throughout this whole thing. And there's this red herring of this real creepy guy, Teen Lurch, Lurch. Oh, yeah. 
who is like, you know, the clearly the red herring, but that's where Jamie's like, oh, maybe he has something to do with it. And so she approaches him at his van and she gets into his van. She looks through it and then she hears Lurch coming up behind her and she attacks him. And he says, whatever you do, just leave my Thundercats video game. Yeah. And Teen Doug steps out from behind the van and points at his hall monitor badge. He's like, only hall monitors can be out right now. Really got me. <laughs> yeah. I love how goofy Doug is, yes. especially considering, you know, the reveal later on. It's a real good uh, separation from all the like jockey, bro cheerleadery kind of stereotypes we're dealing with for sure definitely teen lurch has big nathan energy <laughs> thank you because he loves thundercats video game yeah <laughs> <laughs> man the line here which we are in the trail of well look tiffany maybe if she did give blowjob she'd still be alive <laughs> right. and jamie going yeah let's not let's not make that the lesson <laughs> he says it so like sincerely yeah. he does <laughs> like man if if only she did give blowjobs. Yeah. He says it like, Jason's afraid of water and Freddy's afraid of fire. How can <laughs> How do we, we use that? that? <laughs> She's afraid of blowjobs. How do we use that? <laughs> I just, I just feel like, man, there's, there's moments like this that do make this movie transcend the quirky teen horror movie trend. Like, yes. I, I, the fact that that joke lands, and then she also ha- comes back with the, let's not make that the lesson. Like, right. that really solidifies it, dude. All of her little lines of like, you can't say that. Yep, it's real problematic. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all of those little things got me every time. When she gets chucked out of the party by Randy, she yells, "Unwanted touch," yep. <laughs> which I really appreciated. <laughs> And so this is where they're like, they put the plan together. They're like, all right, there's technically one victim left before the timeline is kind of complete here. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the fairgrounds and we're going to trap this guy in this haunted house maze, right? We're uh-huh. going to get him in there and then we're going to beat the shit out of him. I love that that's the plan. Yeah. Yeah, that's the plan. And then so they send the last victim in by herself. And this is what I was talking about where like they show her going down like this elevator and it, the way they film it, it feels like it was filmed on like a foot phone or something. I don't know. Suddenly the call really drops here for a moment yeah but she gets in this haunted house and the killer does follow her and i do love that when she's down there she's in like a, a rundown kitchen looking facade and uh-huh. she goes i'm all alone in the kitchen and i'm ready to blow you <laughs> she's like trying to calm herself she's like uh you know it's just a casual beige at yep. the dollhouse of horrors yep. <laughs> which is like a really funny line that's my favorite pastime <laughs> i do think they overdo the blowjob jokes around here but like it's still they're selling it they hit they hit pretty hard and then so the killer does get down there. They do start beating the shit out of him. And it turns out there's actually a note here, too, because the girl says, well, what if, you know, he slits my throat before I'm able to call for help? Right. Because they give her a r- alarm, like a little button that she hits, you know, and it'll sound out to let them know. Dude, and the little gag of her pushing it immediately yep. got me, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's like, and now you know what that does. She says, like, oh, don't worry. The killer doesn't slit people's throats. He makes sure to stab his victim six. 16 times for their 16th birthday uh-huh. and so they go down there the killer does a tag they all jump and beat the shit out of him and kill him they rip the mask off and it's teen doug mm-hmm. the hall monitor himself they reveal he dated fat trish and he held it against the girls for letting her get drunk drive away and not stopping her and then she wrapped her car around the tree and making fun of her yeah which is like a really like a such a fucked up reveal that is like not on screen yeah and i i kind of applaud them for just letting everyone sort of react to it as like react to the reality of it yeah. right yeah because jamie's even like you guys are to blame and they're like no we didn't we didn't tell her to go like no but you didn't stop her like yeah. you have blood on your hands right. like, i do feel like that is a good like 2020 mentality versus 1980 mentality you know what i mean yeah for sure it's it's very different from how like the house on sorority row handled a similar storyline uh-huh like it's yeah like it, how how a 2023 movie would handle it versus an 80s movie for sure yeah yeah no for sure and as they're you know standing around looking at dead doug on the floor another killer does step out of the shadows <laughs> slits the girl's throat and she immediately presses the <laughs> <laughs> Which is maybe the only way you could get away with a joke about a girl pushing a button for a r- alarm and it being funny. 100%. Yeah. Like, that's maybe the only way you could do it. Yep. Well, and it's so good because she's like, what if she slits my throat? And it's like, he, he doesn't slit throats. Yeah. Immediately get her throat slit. Yes, yes. 
And uh, this is where the killer starts chasing them out of the house. And we forgot to mention that in the present day, the podcast guy, Chris Dubasage, has an older father <laughs> who is a uh, weatherman on TV or just basically a news anchor in general yeah. Yeah. who has won some Pulitzers and things like that. His older father. His older father, you know, not his younger father. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. he's like, oh, you know, they bully him in the future. Like, you're, you're, Comical humor. you're not as good as your father. You're never going to be as good as your father. Right. And as the killer, who we haven't revealed, who the second killer is yet as they're chasing the girls out of the haunted house it cuts to a live news broadcast where the father nick dubasage is like giving a report and the killer just stabs him in the fucking head like the side of the head yeah dude the run by stabbing is so good it is so fucking funny in front of teen chris too Mm -hmm. it's so funny yeah And one last thing I want to mention before we get to the reveal here, when they confront Lurch outside his van, he talks about his video games. Team Doug goes, oh man, you've got all these video games. Have you played the Death Wish 3 video game? Oh yeah. When you kill people, they explode into a pink mist, which again, thought that was a pretty funny moment, but was a throwaway line, but that comes back in a big bad way here. Yeah, it does. Also, I I meant to look it up. Is there a Death Wish? Like, are you playing as Charlie Bronson? That is a great question. If there is, I know what I'm emulating to night you heard that story about kurt russell buying charlie bronson a skateboard and them like doing tricks together (laughs) (laughs) oh man so it does look like for the commodore 64 they did make a death wish 3 game (laughs) cool wow they really did that's amazing i'm gonna have to check this out tonight oh came out in 1985 too this movie did its research so there you go son of a bitch so while the time machine the photo booth isn't available for her to use again in the past she goes into the new time machine which is this basically it's a tilt a whirl or whatever you would call it you know the machine where you get in oh no it's the fucking gravity ufo i remember that shit dude i used to love that fucking ride yeah you get in you lay against the wall it spins and you're like kind of stuck to the wall because of how fast it spins and then like you fucking like at least the one at my county fair Mm -hmm. they also slid up and down yeah maybe i don't think i've ever been in one now that i think about it oh man it was so fun Mm. like you'd fucking you'd stick to the wall you flip upside down it was the shit sure but then you really had to make sure you were right side up again before that shit stopped spinning (laughs) (laughs) there is a good little moment here that's like oh that gets me really good with the the ship starts spinning but we'll talk about when we get there so she starts spinning this thing up because it's her and pam that are in there and the killer steps in with them she starts the machine up it starts spinning and pam gets stabbed in the gut and then thrown out of this thing like she gets sucked out of it like the cloud and nope sucks <laughs> up Keep on that one scene but it's like how like that was one of my big notes was so the mom just died. She had to have died. <laughs> <laughs> she she flew out of that thing. How did she not die right there? I couldn't answer that question for you. But the killer rips his mask off and turns out, uh-oh, it's Dubasage. It's the podcast guy. <gasps> so I don't understand the logic here in terms of the time because it's present day Dubasage, right? Yeah, he stole the time machine that they were working on in the present. Right. And it's implied they got it to work. He knocked her out and got in it right okay that makes okay all right i feel like i missed that part if they said it in the movie but um he takes his mask off and he's like and i'm michael fucking myers and i'm like "Mm -mm, (laughs) no you can't do that but i'll let that moment slide because before this actually we should mention the machine starts spinning and then before he takes his mask off he's pinned to the wall as well and this is the moment i was talking about he kind of forces his way up onto his feet and is standing sideways on this thing as it's spinning i was like this is pretty fucking cool i love that that's so good he kind of turns into robocop the way he approaches them (laughs) and honestly impressive because that shit was hard to do Uh Yeah, Yeah. you would not be allowed to ride again. Absolutely not. So he gets, he has his knife. Mm -hmm. He starts attacking Jamie, gets her knife, and he goes, now I have both knives. (laughs) It's a good (laughs) joke. And then, dude, she kicks him into the spinning UFO part, like against the wall, and he explodes into a fucking pink mist. Fantastic. Nice little payoff. This is where he does say, I'm Michael fucking Myers. I'm a legend, which is like, no, 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 you're not, sir. Cut that line. Cut that line. I don't like it. But um, she goes back to the future. Yay. Yay, We did it. I mean, her mom definitely just died. I don't know how Pam's not dead. But (laughs) I loved that she gets back 
to the future. She goes, she sees her mom again. She hugs her. And I do love that in the future, the mom version of Pam is wearing the frayed white jacket that Jamie's been wearing the whole movie. I did like that touch. Yep. And uh, yeah, this is the end of the movie, Mally. Can you tell us exactly what the new timeline has in store for her here? So she meets um, her friend's mom who helped her escape back to the future. Mm -hmm. And like she runs into this older guy and is real confused. And then she explains, oh, your parents actually got together earlier Mm -hmm. because of you. Mm -hmm. And now you have an older brother named Jamie. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, weird. We're both named Jamie. (laughs) And then her mom comes out. She's like, hey, Colette, time for dinner or some shit. Uh And then cut to credits. So two things here we forgot to talk about, but the whole impetus for why the podcaster guy Dubasage was doing this whole thing in the first place was because just for clicks. Exactly. Yeah. He goes, you know, it's hard to keep interest in a murder that happened 30 years ago where it was only three girls that died. So we needed to up the body count and it played in perfectly with uh, the note that the mom never got in the past, like at least not in the 1987 timeline. Yeah. He just wanted this to get more clicks on his podcast. He's like, maybe I'll get a Pulitzer or whatever, like my dad. Mm-hmm. And and now that that's been taken care of, Lauren, who is now a full-grown woman and has the daughter, Amelia, that's friends with Colette now, I guess, <laughs> she made the second notebook that's like, here's all the stuff you missed in between when you came back in time to today when you returned. She hands her a book that has everything that's different written on the front of it, mm-hmm. which is very funny. It would be so much funnier if she was just like, Marvin Gaye, Trouble Man soundtrack that explains <laughs> everything. <laughs> This is a great little end here because this is basically right up to the end credits. You know how in 80s movies, especially like uh, Fast Times or something like they would Mm -hmm. tell you like, here's where all the characters went off to go to. That's what it reminded me of for sure. The notebook opens up and it's like, oh, here's what the new timeline is. Here's what happened to all the different characters. I thought this was a fun little sequence here. It's weird that Lauren's like, I had to keep an eye on Chris Mm Dubasage, even though she wasn't there for the killer reveal. Yep. Yep. And she goes, oh, he he went off and became a monk or something like that. Yeah. (laughs) very interesting but uh yeah that's that's totally killer do you guys know who the actor playing adult lurch is in mm. that one shot no. the late brendan o'brien who was the voice of crash bandicoot what? Whoa. <laughs> yeah. whoa wow okay thought that was a weird little connection there that is a weird little connection all right all right whatever no this was uh this was a fun movie this was a fun time it's man it is very well paced yeah i feel like the script is pretty tight and i don't really have any complaints honestly I, like i said the only thing i was like Mm-mm, about was that one line of dialogue I, and i forgive it because the rest of the movie is is top notch i think 87 percent is pretty accurate yeah no i think i think it's super rewatchable too oh like, yeah i feel like if i put this on at a party it would go down smooth like a full glass of vodka with a <laughs> splash of oj yeah <laughs> Uh, um, I guess we can go ahead and talk about our recommendations. Yeah, I, I give it a thumbs up. I give it a Roger Ebert thumb from the grave. Thumbs up. <laughs> thumbs up out of the grave. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Molly, I know this is your pick, so obviously you've, you've got some, some positive thoughts about it, but what would you say is your final word on it? Uh, it's fine. <laughs> Could you imagine? Like, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, this movie's fun. It's, it's a good fucking time. It is totally killer. Yeah. It's a killer fucking movie. God damn it. <laughs> Why don't we jump over to Prop Cop? And for new listeners of the show, Prop Cop is where the three of us are going to look at all of the different props in the movie we just talked about, and we're each going to cop one of those props. Yeah. Cop that prop, baby. Don't. <laughs> don't. Don't do that. This is your movie. Cop that prop, baby. You pick the first prop. I would like to go back in time to five <laughs> minutes ago before you fucking said that. I will take Lurch's van. Mm. Oh, is it the van that's got the Cobra on it? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. When I saw that at the party, I was like, why is no one talking about this van? <laughs> Cobra van. Nathan, what about you? I want Lurch's copy of Thundercats for NES because yeah. that game was never released. Hell uh, yeah. <laughs> sir, if it's in my van, fuck you. <laughs> you know, that van just made me think about Krieger's van from Archer, which is like, dude, this van is rolling probable cause. Like, <laughs> it's just asking to be pulled over. There's a couple of great ones. I thought it's not my actual pick, but I, I had to write down whoever wrote the note on Tiffany's locker that says burn in hell, Tiffany. So funny. With like all her flowers and shit. I was like, Jesus Christ. Hi, I'm the problem. It's me. <laughs> I'm going to go with Pam's bootleg VHS collection. Yes. Cause man, she had some great choices in there. Certified bangers only. Absolutely. So let's talk about bit part for our next segment. This is where, you know, there's a lot of extras in this movie, a lot of background characters. When 
don't we get in there? You know, why don't we go back in time and get in these costumes and chill out in these party scenes or whatever? Uh, Nathan, who is your bit part? I cannot believe you let me go first because <laughs> I think I picked everyone's bit part. I'm, uh, look, I'm going to go ahead and I say now. Yeah, I swear to fucking God if I'm you gonna, took mine. I'm going to say now, if you picked mine, I will be shocked, but also <laughs> I will be very upset because I do not have a backup. I'm going to be so pissed. Let's hear it. So during a news segment in okay, the movie. Okay, that's not it. <laughs> nope. They inexplicably point the camera at a kid spinning a nunchuck in front of the school <laughs> and i'm obsessed with that moment no that's not mine okay. that's not mine but that is a great pick that is not mine either dc go ahead bud all right so at the very beginning of the movie uh-huh. when chris dubasage is giving the tour of the town and everything there's the group of people wearing the same mask the killer war and everything uh-huh. angie comes out with the samples of fries <laughs> and she hands them all of them you hear one guy go how are we supposed to eat <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's gotta be me. I want to be like <laughs> mumbling through a mask is always funny. <laughs> wow. Okay. I thought either one of you two was gonna take mine, but you didn't. Okay. What you got? Because I feel like it's like the only fucking one you could pick. Oh. Okay. Because while his younger version does have lines, the adult version of this character does not. Mm-hmm. So he's up for grabs. Mm-hmm. I'm going with adult Eddie Royal. Mm. Oh, sure. In the poster. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. Put me in the poster, son. <laughs> oh, we forgot. Norm interviews him for a second and he goes like uh, a man showing emotions fascinating yes. <laughs> <laughs> i forgot about that line you're right it's so good all right well we gotta talk about it fellas the silver lining our do our dill diligence we gotta fucking do it <laughs> we gotta do our silver linings for totally killer who would like to go first? Uh, I'll go. Okay. Presumably, Lauren became fucking crazy rich for inventing <laughs> time travel. You would think, right? You would absolutely think. Yeah, I would hope so. I wrote down, hey, man, everything kind of worked out at the end. Yeah. Kinda. You know, she's got an older brother now. So there you go. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish that also one of the reveal was that her dad was still ripped like Zach Efron. <laughs> like, I was kind of hoping he'd rip his shirt open for whatever reason and just have a fucking six pack. He walks out looking like Efron and Iron Claw. <laughs> he still has the muscle T-shirt on and then tears that off. And he has <laughs> muscles underneath. That would have been a great reveal. God, talk about a hat on a hat. Mm-hmm. Some abs on some abs, mm-hmm. Allie, what's your silver lining? The new Jamie gets to exist. Yeah. 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 There you go. Although, now I'm thinking about it, he could be a piece of shit. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. He seemed, he seemed nice in that one line he had. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Hard to tell. I was catching some dark undertones. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's say this. Let's say those dark undertones are still there whenever you finish watching Totally Killer and you need a pick-me-up movie, something you double feature with Totally Killer. We always like to do this for movies we do on the show, give you a, a second helping, something the opposite ends of the spectrum, but maybe there's some connection there. What's a movie people should watch after they watch Totally Killer? I can go ahead and go. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the similarities are pretty striking, and I thought it was a great spin on an old classic, and we've already talked about it. Why don't you watch Happy Death Day? Nice. Right. That's also Blumhouse right i think so yeah yeah nathan what are you watching this movie reminded me a lot of uh, another movie from almost 10 years ago which kind of blew me away but uh i would go with 2015's the final girls oh, another nice. comedy horror meta approach to time travel ish yeah yeah had a fun time with that one yeah absolutely mally what are you watching well boys uh, i'm sure you know where i'm gonna go with this but Gone in 60 seconds <laughs> some would say in this movie the wrong kids died i swear to god so why not go with a movie where the wrong kid dies and throw on walk hard sure. i swear to god we, we gotta make a rule you can't recommend the movie we've done on the show you can't do it no it's a great movie, though. <laughs> it's a great movie. <laughs> I'm going to say again, watch Bottoms if you haven't seen it. It's fucking great. Okay. You smell that shit, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Pole's a big fat cunt. Uh, <laughs> t- totally cunty. Look out, man. All right. Well, that's Totally Killer. If you want more of our show, be sure to tune in. Next week, we have two episodes left mm-hmm. of the season, fellas. We're a waterbed away from the finale. We are. We're <laughs> one waterbed away from the finale. If you haven't already subscribed. Oh, God. Americans will use anything. Thing except the metric system <laughs> <laughs> what if we did what if we just what if that was the one change that happened in her timeline is now we just do everything measurements of water <laughs> Biden still got time to uh, sign that into law <laughs> 
we might be able to slip that by him. He may not even know. But uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm sure he would do his dill diligence on it. <laughs> he sure will. And uh, yeah, if you haven't already, please, I'm going to ask one more time. Please leave us some feedback and a rating. At least just give us those five stars. Mm-hmm. You know what? Even go four if you really feel like it. Yeah. I'm not going to hold that against you, but go ahead and just give us. Uh, I don't know. Four seems greedy. Let's go for three. Mm, you're right. I don't want to oversell. Let's go for three. And you know, now that I'm thinking about it, three is more than 50% in terms of five stars. That's true. If you really want to go two, no one's going to hold that against you. Go ahead and throw a two on there, you know? Yeah. I don't like this bit. <laughs> I, want, I want to be a star. I want five stars. <laughs> Give us five stars. Give it to us. We earned it. Now. If you can rate us individually, give five stars to Nathan. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Nathan, you'll always be my five star boy. Oh, thanks. Aww. My sweet cheese. <laughs> my good time boy. <laughs> And uh, you can also check us on Reddit at reddit.com slash r slash seven linings playlist. Now, fellas, like I mentioned, we have two episodes left. Yeah. And next week is going to be a big one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, historically speaking, if we only have two episodes left, this will probably be the last episode I'm on this season. I was going to say, <laughs> let's go ahead and say goodbye to Valley, everybody. Everyone say goodbye. Everyone give him applause as he's leaving the building. <laughs> And uh, Nathan, I believe you have a clue for what we're going to be talking about next week. I do. So next week's movie is like minus one, minus one more. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Is that really your clue? (laughs) It is. I got a clue for you guys. Yeah. Actually, not really a clue. Just kind of letting you guys know about my personal life. I bumped my shin earlier today, and it's not (laughs) its not doing well. (sighs) God, it hurts. God, my shin. (laughs) Anyway. Uh, thank you for listening, everybody. Tune in next week for whatever that episode's going to be. Uh, recipes Oatmeal and Tiffany <laughs> and Heather. The Mollies. The 80s in general. Sure. And uh, as always, too horny too soon. <laughs> <laughs> Go Devils. Excelsior. 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 Oh, Look it up. Hello YouTube! If you've made it this far, thanks! Could you do us one more favor? Could you hit those like and subscribe buttons? Maybe leave us a comment on what you think of the show. We'd really appreciate it. Join us again next week for an all new episode. Bye!